Welcome to Taking Stock. I'm Amanda Lang. Coming up on the show, does Canada have a culture problem when it comes to business? And it feels like labor has the upper hand at the moment, but is that really the case? Plus, Saudi Arabia is digging deep to buy into high-profile sports franchises, while the rest of the world may call a foul. That's all ahead. First, for the week that was in business, it's time for the briefs. It's been a summer of labor disruption. The B.C. port strike may be over, but its repercussions could be felt for weeks in supply chain snags across the country. And the Canadian Federation for Independent Business is calling for a change in how ports are classified so that future negotiations don't create similar stoppages. Meanwhile, thousands of Metro grocery workers rejected their own bargaining team's agreement in favor of a strike, while in Manitoba, a strike at Liquor Mart went province-wide this week. Delivery firm UPS said a narrowly averted strike in July still cost it tens of millions in lost business as customers diverted their deliveries ahead of a possible stoppage. UPS, which is often seen as a proxy for the broad U.S. economy, also said a slowdown of business from China will hurt its sales in the year ahead. Canadian media firms are hoping the Competition Bureau can stop Meta from blocking news on its sites. The parent of Facebook and Instagram instigated the block after Bill C-18 was passed. The bill would see news organizations compensated for the use of their content on sites like these and on Google, which has also threatened to block Canadian news content. Wildfires across Canada continue to generate record amounts of smoke, with Canada now contributing one quarter of the world's total fire carbon emissions and surpassing all records in this country. Quebec, Nova Scotia, British Columbia and Alberta have all posted records for fire size and hectares burned. Evacuations this week in Yukon and B.C. are a reminder that wildfires remain a real threat. The federal government released draft regulations for its clean energy targets aimed at greening the electricity supply. The goal is for a net zero grid by 2035. The feds estimate that electricity bills will be on average 35 to $61 higher by the time the regulations are adopted. And those are your business briefs. There's a lot of concern about Canada's competitiveness these days as the country's growth lags our peers over the past 10 years. Could it be, though, that the problem is not so much a lack of pro-business policies as a lack of pro-business culture? Philip Cross is a senior fellow at the McDonnell Laurier Institute and former chief economic analyst at StatsCan. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So let's you've done some research on this and the data on our on our loss of competitiveness is pretty clear over time. Our GDP per capita is one way to measure that it's falling. Wouldn't you talk about kind of the culture around business? What are we talking about? Well, first of all, I would make it clear that it's not just the GDP is weak, but it's where that weakness is coming from. It's coming from uh, steep losses in business investment and in exports. And I think that's symptomatic of both a culture that doesn't welcome investment, and because of that lack of investment, we don't have innovation and we've lost our competitiveness. So I think the the data are fairly screaming at you that we have a really deep-seated problem here. And that's why I say I don't think it's enough anymore. You can't just look at policies. Policymakers have adopted a lot of the things that economists have recommended over time. We have very high levels of education. We have high rates of immigration and population growth. Uh, We have free trade deals with all the other G7 nations. I mean, we've done a lot of things right, Mm -hmm. and yet it hasn't paid off. So that's why I ask, I I think that there's maybe a deeper problem here. And that's why I go into culture, uh, that we just don't look to the business sector for leadership and and to supply growth away in the United States and the other fast growing nations do. Which is so interesting, of course, because we have seen government policies, and you make that point, uh, trying to support businesses, encourage business investment, encourage risk taking. Mm -hmm. How would you, what's your advice on how we shift that? Because there's a ring of truth to this, Philip, even if in some some of it may be hard to back up uh, with data. There is a ring of truth that we don't celebrate our entrepreneurs the same way. Uh, We don't celebrate risk taking uh, or even failure, which is a necessary part of that equation. How do we change that? Well, it changes in the way we talk to business. Um, For example, in the study, I quote Paul Wells, a well-known commentator, who Mm -hmm. said, 
if you run a successful business in this country, you're made to feel like you've done something wrong. There is not a business person I've talked to of either a large or a small business who doesn't, when they hear that statement, doesn't nod their head and say, that's exactly it. Uh, we have to rejoice in success. You know, we don't have any of the, you know, we used to have world beating corporations in uh, Nortel and uh, so on and so forth, uh, JDS and uh, more recently Research in Motion. We didn't celebrate them. We didn't look at them as, as examples. Yep. Uh, and as a result, we, we've fallen off. And meanwhile, the U.S., you know, they have, uh, they, they just dominate the world with big technology companies, Facebook, Apple, Netflix, and so on and yeah. so forth. It goes on forever in the U.S., and uh, they celebrate their, their winners. We don't celebrate them here. So I think, I mean, I, I think a lot of people would agree with you, Philip. And then the next question would be, OK, how do we fix it? We've only got about 30 seconds here. It's probably a big conversation. But do you have thoughts yeah. on policies that could change this? Yeah. Well, that's it. I don't think it's policies anymore. I think it's, it's just what you said. It's conversation. It's how we talk to business. Mm -hmm. We have to talk to business in a way that they feel welcome, that they feel valued. I mean, we're always talking about, for example, during the pandemic, about the heroic contributions of healthcare workers. And my mother was a nurse. I'll be the first one to defend them. We have to talk to the business sector in the same uh, way. Philip, so good to have you for this. Really important subject. Thank you. Philip Cross, senior fellow at the McDonnell Laurier Institute, former chief economic analyst with StatsCan. Coming up, a rash of summer strikes makes it seem like workers have the upper hand these days. We'll find out if that's really true. Stay with us.